I am Dr. Daksh Khurana, consultant gastroenterologist at Alchemist Hospital Panchkula. On the occasion of the World IBD Day, which is celebrated on the 19th of May, the aim of today's discussion is just to create awareness about inflammatory bowel disease. IBD is a chronic inflammatory condition which has a protracted course that is a relapsing and a remitting disease. It includes both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. Ulcerative colitis affects the large intestine predominantly and Crohn's disease can also affect the small intestine. When talking about ulcerative colitis first, it commonly, that is 40 to 50 percent, affects the large intestine and the inflammation usually is uh, in the rectum and sigmoid area of the large bowel, which is termed as proctitis. The inflammation can spread proximally involving the descending colon, which is termed as the left-sided colitis, and in some and in a few patients, it can extend involving the entire large intestine, termed as pancolitis. Whereas, if we talk about Crohn's disease, the main area affected is the ileocecal area. The second most common involvement is the small intestine. Inflammation is typically seen in segments, which is termed as skip lesions. 20% have involvement of the large bowel also, which, are, which is termed as Crohn's colitis. And a small minority of patients develop uh, perianal inflammation, which can lead on to fistula formations between the uh, perianal skin and the large intestine or even the other organs in the pelvic area which, can, which uh, are called as the perianal fistula, fistulizing Crohn's disease. So the characteristics of ulcerative colitis is that inflammation can spread proximally from the, uh, from the distal to proximal large intestine and the characteristic lesion of Crohn's disease is are the skip lesions that mainly and mainly affects the ileocecal area. Signs and symptoms of IBD include diarrhea, abdominal pain, rectal bleeding, tenesmus, fever, weight loss, vomiting and anemia. Differentiating uh, differences and similarities between the two types of ulcerative colitis Ulcerative colitis tends to affect both the genders equally and Crohn's disease tends to affect females more than males. Smoking is a very interesting factor. Smoking tends to protect uh, against ulcerative colitis, whereas in Crohn's disease it tends to aggravate or flare up the disease. Onset of both the in both the diseases is more or less the similar that is 14 to 15, uh, 15 to 40 years of age Talking about pathology in ulcerative colitis. It is a more continuous inflammatory disorder progressing from distal to proximal colon Whereas in Crohn's disease there is patchy discontinuous involvement termed as the skip lesions and histologically, ulcerative colitis is more superficial, whereas in Crohn's disease it is more transmural, which means that there is involvement of all the layers of the large intestine. Complications of ulcerative colitis include severe bleeding, toxic megacolon, rupture of bowel called as perforation, as well as colon cancer. For Crohn's disease, the complications are more severe as it is a transmural inflammation which include stenosis, abscess formation, fistula formation, perforation as well as colon cancer. Pathophysiology is not fully understood but we know something that is there are a lot of genetic and environmental factors that can predispose you to inflammatory bowel disease. Environmental factors including problems with microenvironment, dietary habits, infections, 
drug intake like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, antibiotics, stress or even smoking. Investigations that can be done in a patient with uh, inflammatory bowel disease include complete blood count which can indicate uh, the anemia, the type of anemia, albumin levels which tell us uh, they are usually associated with low albumin levels because of protein loss because of secondary to inflammation in the uh, intestine. The inflammatory activity can be assessed by doing ESR and CRP levels. Superadded infections can be ruled out by conducting stool tests for Clostridium difficile infections. But one and single most important test, that is colonoscopy, is done to diagnose inflammatory bowel disease. It is to see the mucosa, the architecture of colon, and even take biopsies during the procedure. CT scan that is imaging modalities like CT scan and MRIs can be done in patients with Crohn's disease to assess the activity and the extent of involvement of the small intestine and to assess the fistula formation. Treatment of inflammatory bowel disease is usually divided in for treatment for acute attack and treatment to prevent relapse. For treatment for an acute attack, the drugs that we use are corticosteroids and TNF-alpha antagonists in, uh, in this condition. TNF-alpha antagonists are usually a rescue modality for treatment to prevent patient uh, to undergo surgery. Talking about preventing a relapse or a flare, we have Drugs such as 5 ASAs, immunomodulators that are, the, that are used for steroid sparing as steroid sparing drugs which include methotrexate or as a, as a thioprin. Surgery plays an integral part of treatment in IBD patients because one third of ulcerative colitis patients usually undergo surgery in 5 years of their diagnosis of disease. But risk for surgery, that is colectomy, increases if it is done as an emergency procedure. In patients with ulcerative colitis, approximately 50% of patients with this severe disease may need surgery in the first decade. And patients with Crohn's disease will often need at least one surgery during their lifetime. The chances of need, needing surgery are more if small intestine is involved as compared to the large intestine. So the take home message of this awareness program is it is inflammatory bowel disease is a lifelong disease. Ulcerative colitis is more common than Crohn's disease in our part of the, uh, the world. IBD must be diagnosed early and treated IBD can be associated with extra intestinal organ involvement also. Majority of the cases can be treated medically, but surgery has an important role in the management of IBD patients. After 10 years of IBD, regular colonoscopic surveillance should be done to diagnose early colon cancer. There is, there are there's hope for all IBD patients. There's exciting new advancements, that is, use of biological agents and the upcoming role of fecal microbial transplantation in selected group of patients. Thank you.